In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to conduct a MANOVA in just another stats program. So I'm going to open a data file first. And this data file has a participant variable. It has a treatment variable with three levels. So one treatment is quarantine. One treatment is positive vibes, energy, and another treatment is salt lamp. And we're going to see how, if at all, these different treatments, which participants are allocated to, affect collectively aura color, mood, and aura strength. So our independent variable, so this will be a one-way MANOVA, where we have three levels. One is the, we can think of that as the control group, people in quarantine. And we have a positive vibes group. So these people are still in quarantine, but they're being sent positive vibes. And then we also have a group of people who are also in quarantine, and they have the benefit of having a salt lamp. And we want to see, uh, is there any effect? on one's aura color. Uh, I assume higher numbers mean a better aura color. Uh, higher numbers mean a more positive mood, and higher numbers mean a better, let's say, aura strength. So let's pretend that's a thing. I'm not sure if that's a thing. Uh, so in any case, we'll go to the Manova drop-down menu and select Manova. And so this is pretty straightforward the way this is set up. You enter in your independent variables where it says fixed factors. So we only have one independent variable. And we will enter in our dependent variables. In the dependent variables box. Now down here at the bottom, very bottom, where it says additional options. Uh, by default, it'll give Polize Trace, which is fine. We'll also click on Wilkes just for just for fun. And to check some of the assumptions of MANOVA, we'll get the boxes M for the homogeneity of variance matrices, and we'll also get a test uh, of multivariate normality. And while we're at it, we will ask for the ANOVA results as well, which will give us the univariate tests for each DV separately. And that should do it for the setup of the analysis. So we can look at our results now. And we can see, OK, uh, looking at the Polize trace, we have For our treatment effect, we have a p-value of 0 0.03, which is ever so slightly below the usual cutoff. So if we're using the usual cutoff of 0 0.05, we see that uh, we have ever so slightly achieved statistical significance, or whatever that's worth in this example. Uh, we see in the Wilkes Lambda as well, that we have the same basic basically telling us the same thing we look at boxes m for the test of the homogeneity of the variance covariance matrices we see that our p-value is 0 0.09 uh, ideally we'd like it to be a lot higher than that but especially since it's a small sample uh, it's not the the best news in the world that we're having a somewhat lowish p-value for that but uh, for now we'll proceed with interpreting the results and we have this generalization of the shapiro wilk test for normality this is a generalization for multivariate normality and this gives us a p-value of 0 0.04 which is probably lower than we'd like if we want to operate on the assumption of multivariate normality 
in our data, but uh, it's, it is what it is. So we'll we'll uh, proceed to claim that we have ever so slightly an effect of the treatment variable on our dependent variables taken together. And we can take a peek at the ANOVA to get an idea of well, which treatment variables, I mean, I'm sorry, which dependent variables is our treatment variable affecting. So it seems to have an effect on aura color. It also seems to have an effect on aura strength, but it doesn't have a univariate effect on mood, at least not if we're using the traditional uh, cutoff levels. Uh, actually, the p-value for strength is slightly above 0 0.05, so it depends how strict you want to be uh, in that regard. But we have a multivariate effect, which is basically what we were looking at. But we were curious to see what the univari univariate effects would be. Now, we didn't answer the question of, you know, what are the differences between the treatments? So what we're going to do now is called a step-down analysis where we will basically assume an order of importance for our DVs. So this works best if we have an order of importance that we'd like to assume. So I'm just going to, because this is kind of bullshit data, I'm just going to assume that um, the most important DV is aura color followed by aura strength and then mood. Uh, that's really arbitrary, which you shouldn't do in this sort of analysis, but these aren't uh, real data or real variables. All right, so I'm going to go an into ANCOVA. And the first... variable I want to look at as the DV is the one we said that was the most important. I believe we said that was color. So we'll put color there. And we have a lot more options in ANOVA, although this won't give us the results in the multivariate sense. We could still check our homogeneity of variance. And we can do, let's do some, uh, let's do a Two key post hoc. Don't 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 do that. All right, for the treatment, and might as well ask for the effect size as well. And we don't need to look at simple main effects because we don't have interactions. And I guess we should look at the means and effect sizes. And now we can take a look at, okay, that's just a straight, this is, it's labeled ANCOVA, but since we haven't put in a covariate yet, uh, it's basically an ANOVA, where we have a main effect of the treatment variable on mood. We don't have any problems with the homogeneity of variance assumption. And what we are most interested in here is where are the differences? So the positive vibes group has significantly lower scores on our aura col color variable than does the quarantine group, according to the the adjusted p-value for the Tukey test, and there are no other pairwise differences uh, for this variable. So there's no difference between positive vibes and salt lamp, and there's no difference between quarantine and salt lamp. And then here we have a table of the means themselves where we can see the quarantine has the highest score, and that is significantly different from the positive vibes group but was not significantly different from the salt lamp group. 
And there we have the means and standard deviations uh, again. All right, so now in the step-down analysis, the DV that we used here, or a color, would now become our covariate, our statistical control variable. And we'll put treatment back as our fixed factor, and we'll put the next important DV as the dependent variable. So that's or a strength. So I'll once again ask for the post hoc test. Oops, stop doing that. Stay, stay still. A little jumpy here. Okay. So we'll put treatment and we'll ask for the Tukey test. And we'll also ask for the means and the effect sizes. Why not? It's all free. We don't have to do simple effects because we don't have interactions to decompose. Uh, what did I miss here? Assumption checks. We'll test for the homogeneity of variance assumption. And I think we're good to go now for the next step in the step-down analysis. So now we're controlling for Now we're controlling for our original dependent variable, or a color, which is not significantly related, as we can see here, to or a strength, but nevertheless we're going to control for it. And our treatment effect is also not significantly related to um, the outcome in this analysis, uh, which was aura strength, right? So here we have also a bit of an issue with the homogeneity of variance assumption. So we have violated the homogeneity of variance assumption here. And for our pairwise comparisons, none of them, we're basically not finding any differences after we control for aura color. We're not finding any treatment effect on aura strength. So basically there's nothing to, nothing noteworthy here except for no effects. Now if we wanted to go on, we found that when we control for um, aura color, there's no effect of treatment on aura strength. But if we wanted to go on, we could go to the next step just in case to see what happens. I doubt there's going to be anything there. And we'll go to include treatment as the, the fixed factor that we're manipulating. And we now have aura strength and aura color as covariates. And we have our our last variable, mood, as a dependent variable. We'll go ahead and do the homogeneity variance test, and we'll do the Tukey test so we can see. It really likes to bounce around there. All right. And then we'll get the Tukey test and the effect size for the Tukey test. And while we're at it, Make sure we have all the means we're interested in, although that's going to be in the Tukey table anyway. And that'll, that'll do for now. So now we can see, okay, what's the effect of the treatment variable on mood after we control for aura strength and aura color? And interestingly, we kind of, sort of, came really close to being able to reject the null hypothesis. The p-value is 0 0.06. Uh, the aura color was 
not quite, but almost significantly related to mood if we're using 0 0.05 as our p-value. Our sample sizes are five per group here, so it's going to be tough to find any effects unless they're enormous. Now, aura strength was not related to mood. So again, we have an issue with violating the homogeneity of variance uh, assumption. Uh, it looks like we do have some differences in the variances between our groups, which is not ideal. And looking at the pairwise comparisons, even though we probably shouldn't do this because our our uh, our p value for the for the effect of treatment uh, on the outcome after controlling for the other two dvs in the step down analysis uh, indicates that we don't have a significant effect we can peek at this and we can see that there's the only thing that approaches statistical significance is the difference between the positive vibes group and the salt lamp group where this positive vibes group uh, has a, a score of about 20 higher on the mood variable but there's a lot of um, error involved there and it turns out when, when we add the correction for type 1 error we kind of just missed the cutoff for rejecting the null so probably we just don't have enough power in this uh, silly hypothetical example and here we have the means and standard errors and confidence intervals for each group and so basically the story here is uh, probably more interesting in terms of the multivariate effect than decomposing uh, that effect into its univariate parts. And so taken together, we were able to conclude that there was a multivariate effect of treatment on the outcomes collectively. When we looked at the univariate analyses, uh, we saw that the main difference was really uh, between positive vibes and quarantine, where positive vibes negatively impacted aura color. And in the step-down analysis approach, our effects on aura strength were just not there. And then finally, the effects on mood were almost there for the um, difference, in particular for the difference between positive vibes and a salt lamp. It seemed positive vibes improve, improve mood better than the salt lamp, and the quarantine and the salt lamp were more or less similar, as was the positive vibes and the quarantine condition. So that's just one approach for breaking down a multivariate analysis. Of course, if your purpose is to conduct a multivariate analysis, you may not really want to follow it up with, with a univariate approach. But uh, in uh, just another stats program, that's pretty much what your, what your options are in terms of following up the um, MANOVA. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video as much as I did. And thank you for listening.